Uh, there's one character in the woke church movement who I haven't thought about for probably a year until just this moment. So it's a man named Kyle Howard, and um, it's, he's, he's a pathetic man. I mean, it's he's a very sad case. I think he's a tragic story, right? Um, I used to laugh about his antics, but really it just makes me sad because he's just a shell of a man. He's, he's constantly... You know, poor me. It's hard to be me. I'm traumatized. But I, I was at, I was joking this just today. Actually, there's a picture of a of a cot, a piece of cotton, a cotton field in my uh, my hotel, and I just remember thinking, man, you know, I could be real triggered by that. <laughs> it's co- what are you trying to say? I'm gonna, I'm gonna put, put me in the cotton room, right? Yeah. But he would get he would go on Twitter and he'd be That's literally funny. serious that he was triggered by this, and he would be, he wept about it and stuff like that. Oh my and gosh. anyway, so. Um, most of his followers and the people who retweet him and stuff are women. And that makes sense to me because a, a, a woman's kind of nurturing nature, right? They don't, they don't want to see a man in pain. They don't want to see anyone in pain. Like when my kids are hurt, you know, when they need comfort, they go to mom because that's where they get their comfort right. from women. And it's a beautiful impulse for women to comfort people, right? Mm-hmm. That's one of their, their prime, you know, you know, skill sets is, is doing that. You know, even adults, when, you know, you see sad stories of, of, of adults, uh, males dying and they call for their mom, you know, like, because that's just, it's, it's in there, right? So men, on the other hand, though, we, I want to comfort my sons, but sometimes it's like, you know what? You're okay. It's time to get up and you can walk this right. one off, right? Right. Um, and, the impulse that I have there is a good impulse because they do need to learn how to brush themselves off and pick themselves up. But the but the impulse for my wife is also a good impulse because you know it's sometimes you do need comfort, right? And when you know when you're a, a wife and you're uh, your husband's helper, there's going to be times when you need to be just for him and comforting him and and things. Anyway, bottom line is that this this woke stuff, I think, regularly appeals to women just naturally because they mm-hmm. want to make it okay, right? And I think men are naturally suspicious of it, right? Because they're like, "What's this man cry, crying over a picture? Is this serious?" <laughs> I cried over the picture that John pointed out with the Gospel Coalition uh, Christmas concert. The picture of the transgender oh. that made me go. <laughs> I was triggered by that. I, I felt like I needed to write a soap opera, you know, crying. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> I was so triggered. My, my point. <laughs> no, but my point is like in the home if. If I were to always let my wife get her way and comfort them always, and it's never time to stop to crying because, you know, it's not that bad. Like, you you know, I think we'd all agree, like, you would ruin your sons if yeah. you did that. Yeah. They never knew what it was like to be like, man, that really hurt, but I'm just going to walk this one off, right? Um, so, 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 we, I think we all probably know... <laughs> Husbands that that do defer to their wives and all that kind of stuff, and we, we have sympathy for them, and we know that that's not right, you know, given our beliefs, right? Um, we need to have just as much courage telling men in the woke context, or or or, the, or any theological issues context, where their wife is basically commanding the situation. That it's it's just as dangerous to allow your wife to to rule you in that way as it would be for your kids, right? Mm -hmm. We know we don't want our wives uh, making our, our, our boys into women by how they treat them. So, but, but, but we, and so we're willing to rebuke people for that, but we also need to be willing to rebuke our friends who we know, know what's right, but they just kind of let it ride, let it happen. That's right. They're waiting. It's what you said last night when we were getting dinner together, like, you know, they're waiting for it to blow over. Yeah. But, but the reality is it like it reminds me of, of the armies of Israel, you know, standing on one mountain, the valley in between on the other mount is, you know, the armies of, of Philistine, uh, or Philistia, and, and Goliath is going out day after day, taunting, you know, mocking God and taunting the armies of the living God. And all of them are, you know, the Israelites are shaking, knees trembling, waiting for it to blow over. Yep. Um, and probably reassuring them so this this will pass this too shall pass this too yeah. shall pass yeah. it'll blow over it'll blow and it did blow over because one actual man chopped off his head yeah so so all these guys are like it'll blow over see that that's the thing so these guys like all the way full circle what you said they will call out names they'll call out Joel, Joel Osteen they'll call out Rob Bell um, but this is what they're doing um, they are completely comfortable uh, going up and kicking the the already slain rotting corpse so of Goliath once David already killed him so so Absolutely. it's so that's the problem is it like so you got a bunch of pastors over here right patting themselves on the back right virtue signaling it's that this pseudo courage they're all standing in a circle kicking Goliath but but his four other brothers are still alive and large 
walking and terrorizing their families. These they, they have a responsibility. So there's sheep being slaughtered, ravaged, you know, giants just taking them and eating them. And and these pastors over here kicking Goliath. That yeah. David already chopped off his head. And then the David is over here trying to take on the next one. You're describing the, you know, the rise like, and fall of Mars Hill podcast. Yeah, you're you know right. What I mean. The, yep. At the time, they were all doing the same thing that they always do with, with Mark Driscoll, yep. which is, yeah, you know, no big deal. And then it finally blows up, right? I don't even know. I don't know all about the story, so I'm not going to go too deep into it. But now it's safe right. to criticize Mark Driscoll. Right. So they're all doing it, knowing that 10 years ago, they were all defending him the way yep. they defend everybody. Mm-hmm. So whether Mark Driscoll is right or wrong, again, I don't know about the story that much. Um, they're doing what they typically always do. Yep. And so, and so now it's new people that are being criticized and in when 10 years, when it's safe to criticize whoever it is, I mean, who knows who's going to be the one to fall, but um, when it's safe to criticize Platt or Chandler or whatever, right. they'll all be doing the same thing, kicking yeah. the corpse again. And for our listeners, just to clarify, when AD says safe, what he means is um, when, when the battle's already been won. It's already been won. Yeah. That's when yes. it's safe. It's safe when, when actual men with actual courage are willing to step out yes. and, and be attacked on both sides. The giants they're attacking and the people who are supposed to be on their team. So this is it, it really the illustration would be more accurate if David walked out from among the ranks of Israel and had to fight Goliath on one side and hold his shield on the other because <laughs> Israel's throwing rocks at him telling yeah. him that, that he's being harsh. Yep. And that's that's where we're at right now. Well, there's a term for it. It's called counterfeit virtue. Mm. It's not real. It's fool's gold. And so we, we've talked about how one of the motivations here is that there's this guild they're playing to. Many of these woke pastors, that could be one motivation. Another thing is uh, they want to impress. Men naturally do this. They want to impress, please gain the favor of their wives, of women in general sometimes. And if, if that's what's driving the church, like appealing to these middle class, you know, suburban women, then the church is just going to naturally fall into whatever the knee jerk emotional response is to a lot of this stuff. And then they'll, 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 you know, and that's that in and of itself is a virtue signal. There's counterfeit virtue there. Like you're not really putting any skin in the game. You're not sacrificing yourself. You're just going on with the crowd and, you know, not, nothing significant is actually even happening. But then afterward, like you said, with kicking the corpse, um, when it, and I'll give you an example of this. Uh, I was looking into Willie Rice this last week, right? Running for the right. SBC uh, presidency. And Willie Rice like hosted a super woke panel. And I know for those listening, if you're uninitiated into all of this, uh, I mean, we disagree with social justice for a variety of reasons, but among them is it destroys the very basis for revelation itself by making truth subjective in some way based on a social location. Uh, It also subverts Christian ethics because it makes justice somehow equal disparity and Lady Justice takes her blindfold off to treat some people different than others. So there's no equality before the law. Disparity equals discrimination. Right. They Um, assume that. It also uh, oftentimes will merge with the gospel in, in heretical ways where it's like some kind of a gospel work or it's part of the gospel or it's you're failing to live out or understand or obey the gospel if you don't do the social justice thing, which which is very dangerous. Um, and it flattens reality. It shows instead of looking at people in the image of God, which they're obsessed with talking about, but it actually is an sort of laying an abstraction over everyone. So everyone's ones and zeros. You're looking at them as some level of oppression and you're reducing them down to that. So anyway, Willie Rice does this panel in 2020 and like he hits all of those things like right. in the panel. Like he's, I'm like, okay. He's speaking the woke language. He, he's, yeah. It's all critical race yeah, theory. He talks yeah. about white privilege. One of the guests uh, recommends Robin DiAngelo. Yep. Like he's talking about as a white man, I can't understand. I need your stories. You know, we can't question these stories. <laughs> we like the, people don't understand the, the uh, racism that's still around because of it's systemic and it's embedded right. and it's yep. like the whole nine yards is in this like hour and a half almost presentation. Yet, if you look at Willie Rice today and the stuff he's saying about CRT, he's like, oh, it's it, it's against it's against what we believe as Christians. Sure. It's horrible. <laughs> it's And so right. I've tried to like make sense of this. Like, how do you and he's one example among many. But like, how do you have a guy who's going to like, you know, blast CRT now that it's safe to do so? And it's on, you know, CRT is like becoming less popular. The pews are getting onto it. They're, they're understanding that's what's go- I think this is the move you guys are doing. And now they're like, oh, no, we're not doing that move. We're yeah. against it just like yeah. you are. Meanwhile, though, they haven't like repented of or recanted any of the previous things they've taught. They're still kind of bringing it in subversively through other channels. Right. 
So it, it's like the, it's a counterfeit virtue of like, oh, I want to please these people. So I'm going to say the right thing. I'm going to be against this because I'm a, you know, I, I want to, I, I mean, I, I can't question everything in Willie Rice's heart. I don't know. But on a, on a broad scale, yeah. um, there, there's, they're trying to bend to public pressure somehow instead of well, just remaining true to like, what does the word of God say? Absolutely. And, and part of the reason they're doing that, though, is we should be encouraged by that. You guys especially should be encouraged by that because part of the reason that they're playing both sides is because now there actually are two sides. For the longest time, they didn't have to pay any homage. Right. They didn't have to do any lip service, any counterfeit virtue, um, because everyone was on the woke side. And now there are certain words they can't say, right? And, and there are certain things they have to they have to decry, like C-R-E-T. Now, they still absolutely believe all the same things. They still have a diversity council, you know, at their seminary and in their local church and all these kind of things. So they still actually believe all the tenets in terms of conviction, but they at least in their language have to decry certain things because the pushback, the battle, the, the fight is working. Like there is, we're winning and, and, and the, the tide is turning. And I think like for me, just thinking like pastorally. So you said like, you know, part of it's cause the dust is still, still settling. So like, as you guys were like standing up and doing this thing for you guys, it was like, all right, I'm getting like thousands of views, you know? So it's like 2018, 17, you know, and, and you guys are taking a stand, you're saying stuff and you're like, Whoa, I'm onto something. There's a lot of other people who are thinking, and it's either love, hate. Nobody's like, this was an interesting video. <laughs> you know, it's like, this was everything or, or go to hell, John, you know, or what, like, it's like one or the other. And, uh, but for me, I was having that same kind of experience, but behind a pulpit. Yeah. And I, you know, I don't want to play the world's smallest violin, but it was, it was hard because it was like, yeah. these aren't just YouTube comments. And I know you guys had yeah. real people, real f friends and family. Oh, so I don't want to, um, I don't want to make light of that. But for me, it was like, these are people paying my salary. This is what I do for a living. Yeah. I've got kids, Absolutely. you know, and it, and it's, and it was hard, you know? And so, and so I was in real time watching um, exactly what Vody Bauckham talked, you know, with fault lines. And mm -hmm. so that's what you're saying is like the dust is still settling. And now it's like, so now I have a church where I talk about way more of these yeah. things with way more candor and way more boldness and, and clarity, not beating around the bush at all, way more than I ever did in my previous church in California. Um, and all it does is just more people come, more yeah. people come, more people come. And I'm not saying there won't in the future be some problems with that. Yeah. Some people who maybe are, you know, they, they like this a little bit more than maybe yeah. they like the gospel of Jesus Christ, you know, who, who are, you know, maybe, um, they, they hate, they hate wokeness, but not necessarily because they love Jesus because mm -hmm. there are other reasons they hate wokeness besides love for Jesus. You know, like James Lindsay does not love Jesus, hates wokeness, you know? And so, yeah. so I may, I, I will pastorally have to sort through some things, um, down the line, but right now though, what's unique. And so I'm not saying everything's perfect now, problem solved, but what's unique is that like the fault, the, 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 uh, the fault lines have shifted back in the day. It was like reformed, not reformed. That was the big, right? Those are the two big categories underneath that. And the reformed, you have the subcategories of, um, like continuationism versus cessationism, Presbyterian versus Baptist, of course. Um, and then maybe, I don't know, maybe complementarian, egalism, you know, but it was like, I'm reformed and I'm going to fall into one of these, you know, categories. Maybe I'm like sovereign grace, you know, and, and we're prophesying and we like, you know, instruments of worship or wh whatever, or maybe I'm, you know, Presbyterian OPC, you know, and, and, but it was reformed. That was a big fault line. And now it's so crazy. So like we planted this new church now I'm in Texas, Covenant Bible Church in April of 2021 in my home, we started with 20 people. We already now have a hundred and it, so it's been less than a year, already a hundred people. We're now meeting at a barbecue restaurant where John's going to be preaching this Sunday. So <laughs> I'd add that to your resume. That's a special That's right. thing. So, um, but like it's, it's exploded, but it, what's funny is I'm uh, right now, I just did a membership uh, class. And so I'm doing all my membership interviews with, with these people who are pursuing membership at the church and um, they're not all reformed. I never, in California, it was like, I just assumed if you're coming to my church, it's because you're, you're a Calvinist. Right, right. And so I'm like having to talk about the doctrines of grace. I'm like, I haven't talked about the doctrines of grace. I mean, I do every sermon, but I haven't like yeah. had to persuade someone sure. who's pursuing membership in my church in like seven years. You know what I mean? It's, it's yeah. so, it's funny. You know what I mean? It's weird. And it's like, I got continuationist. Oh, it makes perfect sense. You know, though. And yeah. because, because, and, and here's the thing. They know I'm a Calvinist. They don't like it. But 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 they're humble about it. They know I'm a cessationist. They don't like it, but but they're humble about it um, because that's not the biggest issue anymore. That's right. That's and, not and the I, biggest issue. I don't issue. know if you remember maybe two, two and a half years ago. It's like right after the SBC 2018 to, I don't know, to somewhere in 2019, there was this 
sort of like unity, 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 like these issues, they're, they're not that important. I remember like Danny Aiken posting something about like Southern Baptist Convention has never been more united than it is right now. And like, and, and the, it's the, just a name it and claim it, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Speaking there, there was, before it was, I was going, <laughs> I'm like, what are you talking? I remember this tweet when I back, when I had Twitter back in the day, I, I put out in like late, or I guess it would have been 2019, like early 2019 somewhere maybe. Um, anyway, I said like, like, what are you talking about? I think it was in reaction to that tweet. Like it's, the house is on fire. It was like one of those, the dog, like this is fine, you know? And um, I got like pushback. I remember like, and this is public. I remember like guys, um, one of them was like Chris Bolt. I remember came out and was like, like I didn't know what I was talking about really. And like, you know, this it's it, the, really the thing we got to worry about is the Calvinist Arminian debate and stuff. And I'm like, are you like, really? Because this stuff is so fundamental. Like mm -hmm. we're talking about like, Hey, is like reality objective or That's like, right. are there like subjective, like That's right. categories yeah. and like, you know, social locations that are barriers to yeah, knowing truth. Like that's the, so much yeah. more basic. The than conversation of the Calvinism of God falls under the parameters of true and false. <laughs> right. We right. have to figure that out first. <laughs> like it's, right. and that's yeah. why James Lindsay as an atheist is like, or like this conversation pertains to me true and false now he doesn't have a reason sure. a defensible reason for that I, you know or i like, would i would push back presuppositionally and say why do you care right. about true and false? but like but it affects he's right to recognize it affects everyone or like like hey should like we steal from folks like is that right. okay or like <laughs> right. should we not it's like right. oh no 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 calvinism arminianism right. is bigger than no it's right. not yeah. like that's so basic it's yeah. it's so, so basic and so many people get it like you you keep mentioning james Lindsay, which is a, good, a great example because um he is a good avatar for a lot of atheists that i know that get it they understand fundamental you know because they have to live in reality that's right right so they they can deny God's existence but they still have to live with God's existence and, right. and what he's created right so mm -hmm. they understand that fundamentally there's some issues here and um, I remember talking um, to you John that on the way here actually just just this, just just today whereas like there's so many things that I think are so important uh, about theology that I just don't, I choose not to talk about because it's like we, we just have bigger fish to fry fundamental fish that we need to fry up all every day because it's it's just such a uh, a threat to just our everyday lives and so what's what's happened is churches have I don't want to call it a new orthodoxy because that sounds heretical but like what's what's important to people as far as being orthodox are basic stuff like like you know basic human sexuality. Um, do you have a spine or are you just going to shrink the first time the government tells you that you can't go to church today because it's too dangerous? Like the COVID stuff has made this even more clear. It's like, how, how about this for orthodoxy? Is your church open? Mm -hmm. Like people are just looking for an open church. That's right. And it's like, so, so we've gotten so debased that it's like one way to know if it's a solid church or not is if it's meeting. That's right. Yeah. You know what I mean? In the old oh, days, the we used thing, to yeah. we used to joke in the old days, like you check their elders list. If there's any women, you don't go. It's not obviously That's not. Right. The, nowadays, is, is it open? Wait, wait, wait. Real quick, before you go, do me a favor. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click the bell so you'll be notified with all our new content as it comes out on a daily basis. And if you're willing to support this ministry, you can do so by going to rightresponseministries.com slash donate. Thanks so much. God bless.